the first Roman armies were comprised of volunteers, of uh, people who were landowning citizens. So the way they were set up, a legion was divided into maniples, and each maniple had two centuries, and these were the sort of basic tactical units of the first armies. The way they set up didn't really change much. As you can see here, they, they would form into three lines, and the three lines would be separate from each other, covering the spaces between each other. Uh, a big advantage of this at the start was the fact that they were much more manoeuvrable than the more usual Hellenistic sort of phalanxes uh, that other armies used. So this is just a recreation of what the army would look like. I'm actually using the Rome Total War engine and the Total Realism mod for that. It's basically, it's showing the three different ranks, three lines spread out. And as you can see here, there are three different types of, of soldiers. Uh, and they they went in, in order from front to back in, in terms of experience to to least experience at the front. So the, the front rank were the Hestati, and they were formed of the youngest men, uh, the least experienced. They would be armed with the pylums, uh, which were the javelins that were thrown at the enemy. Uh, they would they would go at the front, and then behind them, in the second row, you had the Principes. And the Principes were men generally in their 20s and 30s who were pretty much considered to be sort of in the in their prime. Um, a lot more experienced than the, the Hastati at the front, and again armed with the, the pylums, um, the javelins that they, they threw. And then at the very back, the, the third rank would be the Triarii. The Triarii were the most experienced, the, the oldest soldiers, and they, they didn't have as many men in their, their units, their maniples. They were about half the size of the other two. So you can see the type of army that the Romans generally would have faced. Uh, here I've used a, a Carthaginian army, and you can see that generally they would just form into one straight line. Um, a phalanx is, again, just just heading straight forward, whereas the Roman army was much more manoeuvrable. So the the best, well, the, the big uh, advantage they would have over the phalanxes was, as you'll be able to see in a second, is the pylums, the, the javelins, which you can see being thrown here. Every soldier would carry two of these. The Triarii didn't carry them, but they were at the back anyway. So the first two ranks of Hastati and Principes would, would hold these javelins and throw throw them at the, the enemy oncoming. And you can see the second rank would be able to reach without being anywhere near actual combat. So that was a, a big advantage. You can see here that generally they would leave. They would quite whittle down the enemy on the way towards them. And uh, I'm sure that would have a quite demoralizing effect. Gaius Marius, who was born in 157 BC, was a Roman general, politician, um, who is widely credited with being the man who reformed the Roman army. The Roman army, before he reformed it, was comprised of only landowning citizens in Rome. And when he became consul in 107 BC, he was sent to Numidia, which was where there was, there was a war, and he was sent there despite the Senate's opposition to that. So he was denied the right to raise new legions. So raising new legions then would have been asking for volunteers from the wealthiest citizens. So what he did instead was he appealed to poorer people, people who didn't own land and who would have been ineligible to join the army before. So this kind of created what was the professional army um, in that it was people joining up as a career, not out of more sort of uh, loyalty to Rome itself. Before he raised the army in this sort of way, this new professional army. The armies were created normally for specific campaigns. There would be a decision at the start of each year by the consuls, by the senate, as to, to how many soldiers they needed, and they would then go to the volunteers from the landowning citizens to create these armies. So they normally would, would stay together for a few years or a few campaigns, but generally not very long. They weren't in it as a as a career. It was It was about serving Rome and then going back to their land. So when he changed it, he made it about a long-term career. 
The first Roman armies, before they became professional, would tend to suffer, especially at the start of campaigns, extremely high levels of casualties because they were generally inexperienced troops. So they would gain experience over time. But when they would dissolve these armies at the end of it, you lost all that experience and you had to start again. So the, one of the biggest benefits with the professional army was to keep that experience and the experienced legions that would go through several campaigns under maybe one or two different generals became really one of the, the most important things about sort of Rome's, well, Rome's military strength was from them. Marius died in 86 BC at the age of 71. It was during his seventh consulship. Although he was involved with a lot of, in a lot of different things throughout his career, um, especially politics, the longest lasting thing that, that he left behind was the way he changed the army. Uh, it would go on for centuries that way and would prove to be the difference between Rome and pretty much everyone else that ever tried to fight against them. The biggest change after Marius' reforms in the army was mainly in the organisation, not so much the way that they fought. You can see the legions were, the, the cohorts were divided into centuries instead of maniples and they were generally bigger. Um, each century there would, would have had more men than the, their maniples would have before. Uh, again, forming up the same way in the three lines spaced out with each other. And again, just going to show the using the, the total realism engine again, how they would have set up. Um, no difference in the type of, of legionnaires because they were legionnaires now, there was no more stati, principes or triarii. Again, setting up and, and all of them would be armed with the, the pylums and the, the javelins. So, watching watching here you can see it's it's quite, quite different to, to the standard line like we saw before in the, the Carthage. Um, and the the spaces between they they have all covered and one of the, the big advantages of of having the army set up with the spaces was a lot to do with the traversing over difficult terrain. If if an army is marching forward and they have to maybe go around some rocks and they're walking in a straight line like they would have with phalanxes or so on, then they're going to lose their formation. They're going to have to split up. Whereas this was really quite flexible. And the the individual cohorts and centuries were were a good good way to, to deal with with different sort of enemy troops. It was easier for the the generals to to send in smaller cohorts to reinforce the lines and at certain parts. Um, and here we've also got at the back we've got a, a be a Roman general on the horseback. Generally, they would sort of be by the back of the lines and, and where they could get a good good idea of where there was any pressure, extreme pressure or possibilities of the, the line breaking. There are a couple of occasions in history where we've got examples of there being more than three lines in a Roman army. Um, Julius Caesar used, he created a fourth line in the battle of Pharsalus, which was where he defeated Pompey. Um, but that was That wasn't four lines right behind each other he just created another fourth line to the side uh, but generally it was the three lines and again you can see the the pylums here were were used by by all all ranks so quite a uh, quite similar to the way they fought before except now you know you would have a lot more experience in these units and it wasn't in fact where you had before the hastati at the front who were the the least experienced and who were you know, probably newer to the army, and then the really experienced guys would be at the back. The, every unit here, they're all the same. Uh, they're all legionnaires. They would have all been recruited at the same time, generally, if, if it was a formation of a legion. And um, so they would all be experienced. It's it's quite a lot more effective. Uh, it certainly was for for the, the Roman legions when they were taking over for Gaul, which is what we've got them up against here. Um, and one of the, the best examples of, of smaller units working against an army like this would be the the revolt under Boudicca in uh, in Britain where you know they, they sent far more infantry at the Romans but it didn't make a big difference because of the way that the Romans set up and it's very effective and here you can see it's possible they could have they could just reinforce it well it wasn't like you could 
you could send in the Gaulish army wouldn't just hit everyone at the same time. They, there were reinforcements all the time readily available. So again, quite similar to the way they fought before. It's just that the differences are in the way that the army was made up, the type of soldiers and the organisation in it.